Hello, everyone. April Cox here. Today, we're going to talk about publicity. What is a publicist? Do you need one? Are there things you can do yourself? What do they do? And how much does it cost? That's the big questions that I get all the time. And for a number of authors that are looking to really launch their books well and make sure to get the helping hand they need with their marketing, they are looking to publicity and marketing firms just like the one that we're going to hear from today. Before we jump into our presentation today, I want to remind you that we're getting ready to launch our 12-week author work group. If you have a new book and you are looking for some hand-holding because you're confused, not quite sure how to move forward and get that book published, then this is the group for you. You're going to get community. You're going to get live meetings. You're going to get videos and tools and templates and a system that works. Last year alone, we published 127 books for our authors using this methodology and 1,200 have already gone through it together. So is it your turn? Is this the year that you are going to publish your book? Come on over, check out selfpubmadesimple.com. And I'll also put a link to the author work group in the show notes. I hope you like the video. We're going to turn around and meet our expert for the day. We have a fantastic speaker today. Claire McKinney is a publicist. I had the pleasure of meeting her through an author friend who is also here to share her experiences today as well. When I asked her what she was doing with publicity and I saw all of the reviews coming in and everything that was going on with her book launch, I was really impressed. And she connected me with Claire, who had a major role in helping to get that book launched. And we talked about publicity and I twisted her arm a little bit to get in here today and to talk with us a little bit about what is publicity? What does a publicist do? Why do you need one? Do you need one? Can you do things yourself? All of those things and more. So we're going to have Claire here today. Claire, why don't you introduce yourself? Tell us how you got into publicity and marketing and would love to have you go ahead and take on the presentation. I'll pass the baton to you. Thank you so much for the introduction. That was lovely. My name is Claire McKinney, and I have over 25 years of experience in the publishing industry. I started actually as an executive assistant, and then at the time I was acting in New York, and I'm working full-time to pay the bills, and I got a chance to do a regional theater gig. So my boss at the time, who I was, I was his assistant, he was the associate publisher at Hyperion Books for Children. He said, you know, go ahead and, uh, you know, take your break and we'll cover your health benefits and I'll have the job here for you when you get back, which was great. And when I got back, I sort of come to a crossroads and decided that, you know, that I probably wasn't going to be a full-time actor, that it just wasn't the lifestyle for me, but I was definitely bored as an executive assistant. So I said, listen, I need something to do that's like got more meat in it. So he's like, okay, well, we're launching a new line of children's books for African-American kids at the New Amsterdam Theater in a month. Do you want to do publicity for that? And I was like, um, okay. I had no idea what he was talking about. I did not know what publicity was. You know, I'd heard about public relations. In fact, I was a headhunter in a previous life and we used to use public relations as a somewhat of a bait and switch with advertising to get people in the door to interview for other jobs. My boss used to do that, but I had no idea of what I was going to be getting into, but I did get into it. I did well. i worked at many of the big houses. I ran the publicity departments at Miramax Books and also at Henry Holton Company. I started in children's books at Miramax. I worked on children's books and in my own business, I started this business in 2011. Officially, I actually was freelancing before that. And then I decided, you know, I think it'd be much more fun to have an actual business with 
systems and some structure and other people who do things and much more interesting. So I did that in 2011. And although I've had, you know, I worked a lot with the big publishers, a lot of the jobs that I did, you know, I worked with James Patterson, I worked with celebrities, I worked with, you know, Madeline Albright, I worked with all kinds of people. But I really was often given the job of working with the underdog, you know, kind of the book that people didn't know if it was going to go or not, but they knew that Somehow they figured I had a good eye for with books and was pretty good at figuring out how to get their core messages across. And so in my own business, it makes sense that I've kind of gravitated toward the indie author and indie publishing. So a lot of small presses and a lot of independent authors. And I think, you know, it's because I have this, you know, I really believe in the, the can do, you know, people should be able to express themselves and not be censored by an industry that's you know, forced to conform to certain realities because of shareholders and multimedia companies that are just huge, you know, at this point. And that's where, you know, you have these big five publishers that kind of dominate the market. So I learned a lot since 2011 and working with independent authors. And in fact, I did start an imprint to work with some clients that were publishing series and some nonfiction books and things like that. It's not my main thing. My main thing is the publicity and public relations and assume digital marketing, but I've worked across with all kinds of people doing all kinds of things. So today I'm going to try to tell you a little bit about what goes into a publicity campaign and what book promotion is and what marketing is. What book promotion is both the publicity and the marketing sides. Because I find that a lot of times when people come to me, they're not quite sure if they're looking for publicity or if they're looking for marketing. So sometimes they blend the two things and it's totally fine to blend them. It's just that for my purposes, it's easier to understand exactly what somebody's looking for and to kind of put it into the categories where the different pieces belong. So publicist and publicity is about media relations, events, writing and messaging, and it should always have a strategy and a plan. So those are kind of the main things. A publicist really deals with the media and pitching and spinning in order to get their client to be able to be in the forefront, in front of a crowd or an audience, saying the things that are going to progress that person, bring that person forward in some way, whether it's to sell a book or to raise awareness about an issue or an idea or a cause, whatever it might be. Marketing is a little bit more about image and brand, targeting audiences directly, and of course, strategy and planning. So with marketing, you're talking about you know, like your book jacket is about marketing. Your, if you have a personal brand, that can be about marketing. The marketing, advertising is part of marketing. And a lot of the things in marketing relate more directly to sales, whereas publicity and public relations make it opportunities for books to sell. But it's also a lot about generating that awareness and letting people know that the book is out there. So with the publicity goals, like I said, one of the main goals is to raise awareness, to create buzz, to spread word of mouth, and then ultimately to influence sales. So I use some of these literally buzzwords because people ask me, they're like, I want to get some buzz started. And, you know, buzz means different things uh, depending on where you are in the world of celebrity. So certainly, like, if you look at something that's happening right now with Prince Harry and his book and all of the hullabaloo around this book, They started this buzz, you know, ages ago, and they are going to have something that's going to be very buzzy. Most books and most situations don't have that level of buzz, but you can create buzz within an audience that's appropriate for you and the book. But it's just, you know, it's funny because it's one of those words and situations that people often ask me about. And it's like, you know, we hear about it and then we're like, oh, you know, we should be able to do that for anything. And it kind of depends on the level of celebrity. We talked about raising awareness and then spreading word of mouth. It's a function of publicity and also about just getting books into the hands of people. Sometimes by going out there and speaking about them, sometimes by giving copies away that, you know, or offering them at a really discounted price. But those also, you know, again, that bridges a little bit over into marketing, but it's all about getting the word out there in whatever way you can. You create opportunities where people are more likely to buy the book. 
So for publicity campaigns, there are different kinds of things that you can do in a publicity campaign. So some things are creating events or launch parties. The events are twofold. There are two reasons to do events. One is to sell books. And the other is to create opportunities for press coverage. So if you are, say you are a local business, like say you have a bake shop and you're going to do a book about cupcakes. And so you have an event at the bake shop and, you know, maybe it's a children's book about cupcakes and you have a birth, you know, you, you have a party there for kids and their parents you would probably call the local paper and have them come to cover that event. That's the kind of things that local communities like to cover when you do something that involves a lot of community members and makes things, it gives back as well as, you know, gives you something. So that's a sort of media generated event on a very local level. The other is a launch party where you might want to, you want to sell books or a big event in, you know, a lecture hall or something or a bookstore where you can bring in a significant amount of people to sell books. So, you know, sometimes with events, people ask about, oh, you know, I want to do a lot of events. I want to go on a book tour. I want to do this. I want to do that. And the thing about book tours is that a lot of times if you go on a book tour outside of your normal, your, your local community or places where you're known or have something that's specific to the, the the town or place where you're going, you will have a hard time sort of generating an audience. So when you're looking at events, especially with bookstores, that's one of the things that they want to know about. So, you know, people sometimes have said to me, you know, I'd like to go to Los Angeles. I could go to Chicago. I could go here. I could go there. And I'm, you know, and I, my response is usually, yes, you know, this would be great. You could go all these places, but you want to start local and build yourself from there unless you have audiences in other places who will come out for you at a book event. Speaking engagements, if you're somebody who speaks at, you know, associations or libraries or schools, those things are great too to do, especially school visits when you're talking about children's books. But again, they may not be great book selling opportunities, direct sales, unless you're working with a bookstore going into a school or a library, but they're important for spreading awareness. And you can, depending on your relationship with the school or business, I mean, a library or or school, you could sell books on your own in that environment. National media, this is, you know, the, the brass ring of, or the gold star of anything, but like with any media that you book and as a publicist and as a person who is trying to promote themselves or their books, not all media is created equal. So, you know, I want to tell people that, you know, a spot on the Today Show might not result in a ton of book sales. You might get much more book sale out of doing your, you know, having something in a regional newspaper in your area or doing a radio show that's local. National TV doesn't always yield stuff, partly because especially with live television, it moves very fast. It's hard to get your point across unless you're trained really specifically to do that. Local media is my favorite, especially for indie authors when you're starting out, because local media is usually pretty friendly to people who are coming from their communities. It's a good place to get your feet wet. And if you can get you know, local TV, which can happen, that can then be a stepping stone to something else down the road once you have that on-camera experience. But um, the local media, it, it's just, I always say start local and then build up from there. Broadcast and or print. So broadcast is radio and TV. Print is obviously print. But we know that most things are going to online, digital, social media, websites and blogs. Online media, website blogs, influencers, I mean, I put all three things there because I'm just trying to cover absolutely everything. A lot of print outlets have no longer, do not print anymore. And now they're all online, especially some of the local newspapers. They are all online. There's a magazine, which I would put in the print or online media category that's really big with science fiction audiences called The Strand. They do a quarterly publication where they publish reviews, but then they have a website where they have their magazine and then they also have a newsletter. So they cover things in various different, you know, various ways. So, you know, they, they're doing the print, but they have a limited circulation in the print. So they have a much bigger audience online. Social media. 
this is dependent upon sort of where you are with social media yourself. You know, how much do you want to invest in social media? How often do you like to be on social media? Are you a Facebook person? Or are you an Instagram person? Do you have a Pinterest page or, you know, boards? It all sort of depends on how much social media you, you want to be involved in, how effective that can be for you. And then your own website and your own blogs and things like that are other can be campaign components because the website is a place where you can uh, generate traffic. And then if you write, you can also try to get your blogs and things picked up in other outlets and posted elsewhere or linked to elsewhere, which helps, again, drive people back to you and help spread awareness about you. I'm calling this timeline, but it's also sort of your checklist of things that you need to think about when you're doing publicity, when you want to have a book promotion or, or, you know, if you want to do this on your own, or even if you're thinking of hiring someone, the first thing you want to think about is how much money you have set aside for doing promotion and publicity. And we'll talk a little bit more about budget later when I go into pricing and how different types of work equals different types of pricing. Then you want to make a calendar. And when you're making a calendar, this is a big thing. And it's something that I talk to council authors about all the time. You may be able to get media attention for things within a month or so of reaching out to people with your finished book. But it can also take two to three months to get people to write about your book. It kind of depends on when your book is ready and what time people have to look at it. And I think Cheryl can somewhat attest to that. I mean, some things like podcasts and radio interviews, they can come fast. Some print and online interviews, they can come fast. But reviews and things are often slower because it takes people a while to go through books. And everybody that you're probably reaching out to who's reviewing has a stack of other things that they're also reviewing. So it's important when you make a calendar to allow yourself to have a cushion for when you're reaching out to media, and when you expect to see the results of the media. So generally speaking, it takes two to three months to really fill a schedule with stuff, but you can get things earlier and sometimes things are even later. I mean, they started pitching some things for the fall in October and we still have interviews in January for those books. Actually, there was even one in September where we have an interview coming up in January from that September book because this podcast was so booked that they can only get the person on in January. So, you know, it can take a while and you shouldn't be frustrated or expect that it's like not happening fast enough. That's just the way it works. After you sort of figure out, okay, here's my book. It's coming out. The book will be finished. I'm going to be able to start reaching out to people and saying, my book is available and I want to send you a review copy or I, you know, I want to ask about an interview or, or however you're going to approach people. And then, you know, you have the book available to send them in PDF form or in real form, depending on what kind of situation you're in and what you've planned. You'll also want to have, when you start reaching out to people, a press release, maybe a Q&A, like a canned interview with yourself. You may want to do that too, which helps sometimes interviewers or talking points. Um, you want to have those things written out so that you have something to send when somebody says, yeah, but when you're reaching out to people, you want to have a press release or something to send them so they know what it is that you're talking about. Reviewers, like I said, they take the longest amount of time to review your book. Generally speaking, bloggers and influencers can be faster. So influence bloggers can do like Q and A's. A lot of times they'll send you a canned questions and then you answer the questions and then they'll post it when they have room in their schedule. Influencers, mostly I'm talking about Instagram. We could also talk about TikTok, but I'm going to leave that out for now. Instagram influencers, they will often just post an announcement about your book coming. And then a review is sort of a separate thing that they may be able to do down the road if they can't do it right away. If you're going to plan for any social media posts about your book, having an idea of what you want to post and when you want to post it. When you're posting about your book, I actually think that you can start posting about it, you know, early on so that you get your people excited about the fact that it's coming. But in terms of sales, you know, if you want people to buy the book and have it ready so that you generate some pre-orders through Amazon, 
you would probably want to start talking about it, like telling people that they should buy it for pre-orders and start getting that excitement going in a couple of weeks leading up to the publication date so that it's something that was top of mind and people know this is what they're expected to do at this time. Your broadcast, we've talked a little bit about that. And then events. Events also sometimes take a few months to get scheduled. So you actually, if you're doing local events, you can start talking to your library and bookstore about stuff even before your book is done because you can say, you know, I've got this book coming out. Some of you probably are already doing this and you must, you know, have connections with libraries and such so that you can, you know, work out a time that makes sense for when the book is out and maybe get it closer into when to publication rather than having to wait. Sometimes like I just called a bookstore recently. This is in Brooklyn, so it's a competitive market. It's not the same story always for everybody, depending on where you live. But I talked to them about booking an event in March. I called them in November, which is three to four months, plenty of time by industry standards, but they were like, we have had an overwhelming response or overwhelming need for events. And we are booked all the way through April. That's partly because of the COVID restrictions having lifted and people being much more open to doing events. That's a lot of places are just opening still more after being closed down for a long time for in-person events. You know, that's an anomaly, but that's what happened. So I'm always like the early bird gets the worm. I like to go out as soon as I can as soon as they have material ready to go. Okay, so I'm going to give you some examples of titles that we've worked on and give you an example of different levels of things that we've done. So for example, this is a nonfiction book. I know most of you and many of you are children's authors and we, I have those books also here, but I'm just including this because sometimes there may be a self-help or a business book or something like that that comes along through these channels. And so this particular book, Hamlet's Mirror, is about reaching your performance potential. So it's it's targeted to people in the performing arts and it's written by a therapist who was in New York and for 30 years counseling all kinds of levels of performers, dancers, musicians, actors. So for her book, she's done a podcast interview campaign. We've done that for her. She's local media, she's in our local newspaper. We're doing a blog influencer campaign for her. So she's has various influencers. A lot of them are performers themselves who are um, going to post about the book on Instagram. She's in the trade in Broadway world. They're doing a review. She also wanted marketing to performing arts programs at universities, marketing to New York City bookstores. And then she's doing an event at her club, which is the Lotus Club in New York in May. This is a sci-fi YA crossover. So the protagonist is, she's 20, but they're 18 year olds. It's kind of a late teen. So I guess it's more emerging adult. It might be what people are going with these days in terms of categories. But anyway, for her, she also has podcast interviews. There are a lot of science fiction related podcasts in addition to a lot of writer oriented podcasts. So that's a very fertile ground for her. Local media, she lives in a far reaching suburb, I guess you could call of New York City, because almost everywhere in New York State, other than going like way up to Syracuse and Buffalo, is considered a suburb these days. <laughs> but she has local paper coverage. She also has a blog and influencer campaign. There are a lot of influencers that have been interested in covering her book. She also, we're, we're doing a regular, more traditional advertising and review campaign, especially to those sci-fi outlets and niche publications. She's doing local bookstore and library events. She herself, uh, we've counseled her and consulted with her on a social media campaign, but she's been keeping that up on her own. And then also we're submitting the book to awards for her and advising her on what awards she should submit to. She's gone out onto some of her own but that's a whole other conversation because there are a lot of awards that are marketed to indies that are really not worth entering for. And then there are some that I would say, absolutely. Here's a picture book set. And I know that April's seen this, but this woman, Dee Dee Cummings, this is her down here on the bottom right. She is amazing. She's published like 20 books and she also is a therapist. She has her own business counseling. She's got an association that is um, about like helping children with mental illness. And she has a daughter who always wanted to be on Broadway. And her daughter actually finally made it recently and is debuted in a Broadway musical in the ensemble, but she's on stage on Broadway. So when her daughter was young, her daughter was like, she felt like there weren't a lot of sort of princesses that looked like her, you know, like Disney princesses and stuff for all, you know, 
basically Caucasian and, and did not make her feel inclusive or whatever. And so Dee Dee was like, well, you know, let me write my own story. And so she wrote this series called Kayla, a modern day princess. So the books actually all but the fifth book had already been published, but we took and marketed the whole series. So she, she did, again, podcasts, huge for her. She had a lot of interest. Local media and Cheryl helped a lot with this campaign. So she had the local TV. She had the local newspaper. We did a blog and influencer campaign for her too, which was also really big. She herself, we gave her a plan and strategy for her social media, and then she had her team implement it. And then we also did a brand development and consulting with her, which is because she actually is she herself is an influencer. And so she is a brand in addition to her book. So it's it was sort of a higher end kind of thing. But for all of these people, especially for the indie side, podcasts and online and digital reviews and those things and local media are all really doable and really have an opportunity to bring in results for you. You know, some of the things that are not going to happen for indie books, New York Times Book Review will not cover independent books. USA Today doesn't cover independent books. And yet, if you have an ebook or something and it ends up on the USA Today bestseller list, that's something that happens independently. <laughs> you know, but but they have, you know, people have some prejudices still about independent books, self-published books. But I say never market yourself as a self-published author. Always just be an author of a book and then let people figure it out. You know, I mean, why would you ever have to say, you know, like there's nothing wrong with being self-published, but it, when you're going out there and you're talking to media people or, you know, trying to get your book picked up and, you know, whether it's on Instagram or a podcast or whatnot, you are a real author who has written something and you put your heart and soul into it and you deserve to promote it just like anybody else. So. Those are my two cents. So now we're on to hiring help. In the hiring help area, what I wanted to try to do here is let people know kind of what to expect. Now, I've written several blog posts over the years on sort of how much it costs to hire a publicist, what publicists do, all these kinds of things. But this time, you know, for you guys, I'm going to really go over sort of these different levels of services that you can have. But first, I'm going to talk about the swimming pool model, which was, this is just a story. My husband and I, we always wanted to have a swimming pool. Swimming pools, putting them in, it's expensive. And we moved to a place where we had enough room to put one in. And we live we're in a rural area, so it's not quite as expensive. But we still met with various people who tried to sell us, you know, I think much more than necessary, you know, for a swimming pool because, you know, the ridiculous, they just threw in all this other stuff that is ridiculous until finally I found Jimmy the Greek. And literally that's what they taught me. He, his name is Jimmy the Greek. And um, he came to visit us and he said, you know, I'm going to put the pool in and this is what it costs to put the pool in. Double that for the other stuff. And I was like, oh, I see. So, so literally it costs X to put the pool into the ground. And then if you want to put the patio and you want to put, you know, like some the fence, which is required where I live um, and things like that, he said, just assume you're going to spend the exact amount at least on the other stuff. So when I talk to authors about book publicity and promotion, you know, the, the thing about it is that it's a very labor intensive process. And that is why it costs money because it takes hours to go to do because, you know, the amount of follow up that you have to do generating lists, all of that stuff, you know, it takes time. It depends how many things you're going to go after, how much time it might take you. But either way, it can be, a, you know, a huge proposition or a more minor proposition, but no matter what it's going to cost something. And I feel like with authors, because you put a lot of your blood, sweat and tears and money into putting your book together, it's important to know at the outset that if you want to hire somebody, or even if you want to do it on your own, there are going to be costs involved. If you do it on your own, some of the costs that might be involved could be copies of the book that you might need to send out to people from time to time. It could be postage that goes along with that. It could be some travel if you go to somewhere to do an event, you know, those kinds of things. But when you're hiring somebody, there are a few different things. And I'm going to talk about these different things because I'm sure some people have heard of them or retain their purchase the services. And I want to make sure that, that you know, so that if you do look at, for other kinds of help, that you have your arm with some information before you, you go into the conversation. So one type of 
relationship you can have with a publicist as a retainer, where somebody has a monthly fee for a set period of time. Some people have minimums for that. Some people don't. But I want to caution you that it is really, really hard in book publishing and to, and I think Cheryl, having worked on a lot of other kinds of products in addition to books, may comment on this too. She may disagree with me a little bit on or not, but my feeling is that a retainer relationship is really tough for an author because there is often a time window. So you may go out there in your first month, you may say, okay, I'm going to hire you for a month. So they charge you what they charge you for the month. And they send an email out to, you know, 50 contacts, and then maybe they don't hear anything back for three weeks. And then they have to go and like follow up with them. And then maybe there's a scheduling thing, or maybe a book needs to be sent, whatever the case is, it can take longer than just a month. And then you find yourself at the end of a month needing to pay for another month. So, you know, when you have a, a story or something that something that could get out faster, like something that might have a news hook to it, or, you know, something like maybe you have a TV appearance or something and you want to build around it, then it makes sense to hire a retainer. But it's better to hire people either fee for service, like this a la carte, which is the next one, or on a project basis. Because a la carte services, generally, you're working with something where the person you're hiring has an idea of what it takes to do X or Y. And so they're going to charge you to do X or Y. So they're going to do it. They're going to finish it. So say it's a podcast campaign. It could take six weeks to set up a bunch of podcast interviews. And so that's about how much time it might take, (laughs) you know, and if it takes six weeks, you may have some interviews that falls out of that time period. So that publicist will give you a schedule. So you have all the contact information and you can keep track of it on your own so that, you know, once you have those interviews, you're not just left, you know, hanging out there wondering what to do next. I mean, that's the other thing. You don't want to work with somebody who's going to hold your information or your potential reviews and things hostage because you're not paying them for more months and more this and more that. You want to make sure you go into it knowing what you're paying for and what you're supposed to get in return. Now, project fees are um, for me and for a lot of the people that I've worked with in New York, it's a one fee and there's a payment breakdown, but it's for the project. So generally a big project, which would involve some of these other things you saw in the campaigns I showed you where your authors are having events and they're doing social media campaigns and there is a brand development process and all these things. Those are bigger projects and those are sort of all encompassing. They can take six to eight months. And that's how long they take. There's a certain time element to it in that everything is based around time that we need to spend to do things. But the time is not going to get in the way of getting the job done. As long as it's contracted to do certain things, all those things are going to get done that are in that contract unless we decide differently along the way and make an amendment or have a conversation and need to swap something out, which sometimes happens as you're going along if you have to shift strategy. But these are for like big projects, you know, people who they just want to do a lot of stuff. And I can go into that with you if you want, but I'm going to put some money up here now to show you kind of what to expect. So for your retainers, you may have seen this, but the average that I have seen is $2,000 to $3,500 a month. I've seen higher but that's for agencies like in New York City or in a major city. And so, but this is what most people I've talked to, including clients that have come to me, say that this is around what they've seen. A la carte services, you can find them cheaper. I will tell you right now, some of these things may be cheaper, but I don't know what art is in them. <laughs> and so the average from what I know is $1,000 to $2,500. But the $1,000 is kind of for things like writing press kits and materials for you. And then when you get up into $2,500, you are talking about like a podcast campaign or a digital, you know, like uh, influencer campaign, things like that. So that's about where you are at the a la carte. And then project fees, this is the big one, anywhere between ten dollars and $25,000 for a project. So there are a lot of different things that people pay for. You don't necessarily need to have a giant project. It depends on where you are. So a lot of times when you're starting out and you have your first book, it's probably better to go with this a la carte type of situation where you're taking a few things or one thing and you're just taking it step by step by step. That's totally fine too. Okay, I want to introduce Cheryl, because Cheryl is herself an author. I know she worked with April, but she's been working with me for a long time. I mean, gosh, I think it's been like eight years. And she hadn't done a lot with books when we first started working together. And since then, has gotten really involved in books and now really likes to work on books. 
which is great. And Cheryl's awesome. And here she is. Hi, everybody. I'm Cheryl Bass, and I have been doing PR for about 15 years. And prior to that, I was a business reporter for four years, and I have master's degrees in social work and in journalism. I've been working for Claire, helping self and traditionally published authors with their media publicity since about 2017, maybe a little earlier. So I do the PR with the radio, TV, print, online, and podcast hits. She has someone else who does more of the social media piece. I self-published my first children's picture book with April on October 19th. It's called Baby Dragon's Big Sneeze. And I wanted to say that it absolutely makes a difference to use a PR agency that specializes in promoting books and knows the publishing industry, knows the reporters who write about book reviews, the conferences to attend, the awards to submit for, et cetera. And Claire, as you know, has been doing this type of PR exclusively since 2011. And she's, as you could tell, really personable and easy to work with. I'm going to talk to you about promoting your book in a variety of ways. Some may be considered PR and some may be considered marketing, but what's worked for me so far since I published my book in October. And I, I believe that a good marketing plan includes both paid advertising and public relations, which is also known as earned media. If you look at your typical just straight up news stories or feature stories in a publication, that's PR. Whereas an ad Sometimes at the top, it'll say in tiny letters, advertorial, and you can get away with saying different things in an ad than you can in straight up PR. With PR, part of what makes it labor intensive, Claire said it's labor intensive, and it absolutely is. You're calling reporters and you're trying to convince them that whatever it is that you want them to write about or post about or put on their show is newsworthy is a value to the consumer. And these different tactics, PR and marketing, are like arrows in your quiver. And the more you have, the better. And you can see what works and what doesn't and continue with the elements that bring you success. At Claire McKinney PR, my role is making media contact lists of reporters locally and nationwide and getting the press release, talking points document, headshot, book cover shot, informal pitch, bio, and other collateral materials to those reporters. And I use my databases that I have to find those media people and send them the materials and follow up with them by phone and email relentlessly. And then once a reporter wants to schedule an interview or they want a hard copy of the author's book, then I, I forward them on to Claire and Claire talks to the author and, and gets that all scheduled. But one of my roles is to find creative ways that authors can be viewed as thought leaders or subject matter experts for reporters to want to interview. So for example, this author didn't follow us up on this, but we, for one author that we were promoting, wrote a book about living in the South during the era of segregation. And an idea that Claire and I had was for her to offer a Southern recipe for local TV news stations that do cooking segments. And during that cooking segment, she could also discuss her book. And other authors, we found this very successful. Other authors have written and we've successfully placed letters to the editor or bylined articles on certain topics that relate to the topic of their book or their education or their background. And we can help brainstorm with you on helping you establish yourself as a thought leader in a particular area. And one thing I learned on the other side of PR and marketing as a newly self-published author is you can never do too much publicity. Your marketing, advertising, PR budget actually really should be, I think, more than what you spend even on your illustrator for a picture book. Otherwise, you may have a beautiful book that no one's going to know about to read. Particularly with picture books, you're competing with celebrities. Jimmy Fallon, Seth Meyers, Mariah Carey, Reese Witherspoon, Andrew Barrymore all have children's picture books. And they're all able to plug those books on those evening talk shows that they go on that, you know, we don't have the ear of those people to get on those evening talk shows. So they're getting this national prime time. So that's part of probably why you're self-publishing in the first place, because you probably submitted your picture book to publishing houses and they they maybe have five spaces for picture books and they're all taken up by Jimmy Fallon and, and company and they publish those. And so we have to level the playing field. And that's what a good PR strategy does. It helps to level the playing field somewhat so that you can get your name out there and your book. And like Claire was saying, lots of hometown newspapers and other local media outlets really do enjoy doing stories on local authors, like local person makes good, you know. So consider a PR plan that does include pitching you and your local media. Also, be flexible and willing to do interviews on short notice. 
So try not to plan a big trip and be out of pocket just before your book publishes. I've garnered myself podcast interviews on evenings and weekends as podcasters are sometimes based in different time zones or different countries. So be willing to to do that. TV people often make you wait while they sit on your story. And then all of a sudden, they suddenly decide to cover your story with little to no notice. One thing that I would say is get over your shyness. You may notice from looking at me here, I have a little bit of a visual impairment. Sometimes one of my eyes wanders. It can look like I have a glass eye. Whatever. I deal with that. And I still promote myself on podcasts and in things like this. Because it, because it's for the greater good. I want I want people to know about my book and I want people to. So whatever shyness you have, I understand as somebody who has something that to be, you know, can be shy about. But move through that to help for the success of your book. If you have an interview coming up, tease it on social media, post the interview link after it airs or publishes. This also helps the story live beyond the people who initially saw it or read the article when it came out. And maybe even on your website, maybe have a place if you do have PR help to post where you've you've gotten some recognition and some publicity. Another piece of advice would be to submit your book for awards. And Claire knows about, as does April, the good ones to submit to. And they all have costs involved. So the big prize that the winner earns is often supplanted by the people who didn't win, who, who paid, you know, $250 or whatever it is to not win. But but budget that in, because if you can get an award, then promote the hell out of that, because put content on your website and on social media and in your email signature line, touting the fact that you're an award winning author. Make sure to update your author and book description on Amazon to indicate that you won an award. When you post about your book on Instagram and connect with other authors and people in the publishing world, you're going to receive authors to offers to review your book on several platforms. If it's a reasonable amount and, and you check their follower numbers and, and cons, you know consider doing that as reviews on Amazon in particular are critical for making sales. You should also consider ads and, and April talked to me about this with Books Go Social and getting reviews on NetGalley. April will tell you about that when the time comes. Another great tool that you can use yourself is something called pubby.co, P-U-B-B-Y.co. And for about $250 a year, you can review other authors' works on Amazon in exchange for what they call snaps, which is their currency that you exchange for reviews of your book. And you can review other books in your genre to keep your finger on the pulse of what else is out there and to help other authors and get reviews for your book at the same time. And you can get several reviews per week with this method to really boost up your number of reviews on Amazon. It's not an exact quid pro quo. So you're not getting reviewed by the same person you review. So it does not go against Amazon's terms of service, but that's really helped right now. So my book was published October 19th. And right now I have almost 100 reviews on Amazon. April will talk to you at some point about doing A-plus ads on Amazon with Holly and about doing a promo video with Crestia. I definitely would say to do those things. They will improve your book sales and, you know, be willing to call your indie bookstores to see if you can do readings and or signings. If you can get bookstores that are willing to do this, we can help you promote your event by listing your event on local media calendar listing sites so that you actually have people that show up at your book signing or book reading. In the summertime, consider paying a booth rent to have a booth at a local summer art festival or similar. Consider, now this is something that Dee Dee, um, I forget her last name, but the picture book author did, uh, Dee Dee Cummings, I believe her name is. She partnered with some nonprofits. And so consider eventually, maybe not for your first book, but partner with a nonprofit that makes sense for your book, your brand and your goals and look for cross-promotional opportunities. So for example, my next children's picture book, will be loosely based on a dog that I had who was difficult to train. So I'm thinking of donating a portion of book sales to an animal welfare group or similar. And I can also say that in my promotion. And that makes people feel good about writing about my book and about promoting my book because I partnered with a nonprofit. So even though my book is for profit, I partner with a nonprofit. But make sure the nonprofit sort of makes sense for the theme of your book or what your goals are or similar. And if you decide to go on a book tour and promote your book in a city other than where you live, which Claire said can be hard to get media for, depending on which package you purchase, we could also pitch you to media in the area that you are visiting. And as far as the retainer, Claire said that I may have additional thoughts on that. 
And I agree, it can take two to three months or so to really get ramped up with publicity. But if you were to do a retainer, I could see, you know, two to three months and then possibly us doing follow-ups on anything that's hanging. So for example, if I had a reporter that said to me, please get back to me in January, we're really interested in so-and-so's book. And, you know, you've paid for two to three months and you've paid through December, you know, I wouldn't have a problem. I, I would have to talk to Claire about this, but I wouldn't have a problem calling that reporter back, even though that's after the time, that's still something that's held over from before doing that one follow-up or two follow-ups with anything that's sort of like a, what I consider like a hanging chat, something that's hanging over that's still, you know, from the time period that you did pay for. So we wouldn't just stop abruptly and everything is left hanging. I do do one of the entities that I work for besides Claire McKinney PR is the exercise coach, which is a national franchise of fitness studios. And whenever a franchisee opens up in a different location, I promote them in the location they open up in. And I do that for a six to eight week period. And that's what they pay for is the six to eight weeks right around the time of their opening. And if there are reporters that say, contact me later or something like that, I, I still follow up with them after that little six to eight week stint. So that could be worked out for a retainer. And that's basically uh, all I have to say. <laughs> Thank you so much, Claire, for your yeah. time and Cheryl as well. If people want to reach out to you, what is the best way for them to do that? They can get, reach me on my email address. So I'll just put that in the chat. So Claire at Claire McKinney, PR.com. Great. And they can go to the website too. Hopefully Claire that's, yep, that's it. R.com. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you again, Bye, Claire. Everyone. Thank wonderful, you. Wonderful.